<laughs> Welcome to Burning in Hell. It's like really hard to be a tall guy nowadays, I understand, because you never had to develop like a full personality. Um, <laughs> what's up, guys? What is up, my little foreskins? Yes. <laughs> That's what Harry calls his people. I call my people the little devils. Oh. You know, foreskins, devils. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Um, I am with the Harry Jowsey who... <laughs> We just, I love how you laugh when I just say it. Did I say it wrong? No, that's perfect. Okay, good. It. Thank you. Mm. Um, we, I discovered him on Too Out to Handle. He's like charming, tall Australian guy, classic. Yeah. But then, you know, he's kind of really taken his career next level. Oh. Is this compliment time? Sick. No, yeah, keep no, going. I'm building you up to like break you down. And Sick. when I say next level, I mean you're on Burning in Hell. Congratulations. Woo! It is downhill from here. Um, Harry, what the fuck is up? How are you doing? How's LA? How are you feeling? How's your mental health? I'm amazing. I'm a little bit hungover. I went to a party last night mm-hmm. at, a, at this club and every single girl that I'm fucking is there because they're all, I guess, influencers. So it was like really horrible. Like ang- anxiety was through the roof. Like it was actually sucked. This girl walked over to me, like started hugging me a little bit and like grinding on me. And I'm like, mm. But the other one's right there behind me mm-hmm. and I was just like put my fingers in their mouth this is bad mm-hmm. I need to walk over and pretend I'm doing something so I picked up the menu and just started pointing at shit <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to delve into the mind of a fuck boy because this is some would call fascinating some would say you're going to burn some brain cells but let's do it I'm a gentleman so of these girls LA is fucking small is what I'm realizing I've walked into people I know and I've I'm from New York and I've walked into like people I know on the street yeah um how are you navigating the dating scene? Like, are you talking to so many people that you like text the wrong person? Do you have like a roster? Do you have like a whiteboard at home? Like, how do you keep track of all the women you're talking to? I like to keep like a handful, right? So, cause I want to keep them on as long as possible on mm-hmm. the roster. Mm-hmm. Cause I think the best sex is when you like actually know someone like mm. one night stands are fucking boring. Like yeah. don't fuck me for one night stand. Cause it would be the worst dick of your entire life. <laughs> Like, let me give you, like, two weeks to, like, or a week to, like... You need to ramp up. Well, I need to figure you out. So, like, I can mm-hmm. really, like, make you come, like, every single time and then, like, never talk to you again and, like, spin you out. Yeah, so can you make girls come when you're drunk? Yeah. Oh, my God. Congrats. Well, because I'm persistent. Like, I get annoyed at myself. Oh, so you're competitive. Well, because I'm, like, she's going to text the fucking group chat. Like, Harry just gave me the weakest dick of all time. But how do you perform under pressure like that if you're telling yourself, like... Harry Jowsey has a name that has to be uphold, upheld in LA. Like, that would make my dick soft. Really? I don't know. Like, guys get nervous very easily in bed. Like, I'll not see a guy for a while. Nah, I get, like, a little bit angry at myself. Because I'm like, yo, like, you are only this age. And this thing is, uh, like, this dick has a time bomb before yep. it, like, is limp forever. Mm-hmm. So, like, use it. Be be a fucking stallion. Be mm-hmm. a young stud and, like, figure this shit out. Called a legend. <laughs> young legend. <laughs> But like I legitimately will make sure that pussy gets eaten first and foremost. That is Who taught you that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up in the morning and Not I was DJ Khaled. No. So you why do you like eating pussy so much? Why do you like to make girls come first? Because when I was in high school I ate this girl's pussy and I came and I'm like, I enjoy this. Shut the fuck up. I enjoy this way too much. You guys, Harry is the biggest feminist we've had on the pod. Legitimately, please, like someone fuck me. Side note, you know what I think is cute that you do? Uh-oh. You come up with like little nicknames for everyone. You have to. How does which is the most fuckboy shit ever? No. Oh my god. Because can't remember. Because you don't names. know any of our names. No, nah, listen in. Here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I swear to God. How do you do it? Young gentlemen, ladies. Nah, actually, ladies don't do this to dudes because it hurts. <laughs> a, a girl did it back do to it. me, and I'm like, you actually are going to get blocked. <laughs> like, don't you dare. But gentlemen, I swear to God, calling you like a little sunflower or like a little national treasure, tre- national treasure, like little something, you know, not like a rap name, like little, hey, what up, you little dumpling, which is like cute and fun swear to god so exciting every single day and you have to think about this every single day i'm waking up and i'm texting you something different like sometimes it's like fun and cute because you don't know who you're texting no (laughs) i I know it's either one two or three like wait (laughs) that advice is difficult because it because you have this fucking accent like for example we have abby our producer abrick 
Abby, can you say little sunflower into the mic? Hey, you little sunflower. That's creepy. Yeah, yeah I, can't, I don't have the accent. Also, <laughs> no, say if it. I was... Hey, little sunflower. If yeah, I, that's cute. <laughs> if I do that and anybody knows that we like do the podcast together, they're like, right, did Harry just teach you like some trick? Are you just trying to be like Harry? No, I'm t- I'm telling you, it. it's like... There's another it thing. It works because you have this fucking and accent. There's His another thing. thing you say to girls too. You go, what's up, silky puss? Oh, yeah. And I can't get away with that. You say that? Because I would. that man would have been arrested just yeah no, i can't get I, away with i that. swear to god whenever like i'm like if i'm hooking up with a girl and her shit is like amazing like i'll answer the phone like what's up silky puss like don't call me if you're around your family <laughs> <laughs> does that not make you feel flattered like if some guy's like holy shit you have a silky puss oh i guess like, if you're already hooking up then yeah that's true. well it's fun like silky little puss like are you crazy aren't all pussy silky like what uh, some have bumps some of them some, but like, maybe that's that adds good like vibration. some are like wool <laughs> some of <have> claws <laughs> <laughs> yes some of teeth yeah some of them are shallow oh my my friend is having sex was seeing this girl who has a shallow vagina so it means that he hits her cervix like, i would be like yo that makes me feel awesome like, yeah like you feel huge yeah you feel like a fucking god like it's halfway in and it, and you're hitting the back wall like that is sick are you ever afraid that girls just want to be with you because you're tall with an accent and you have followers yeah, all the time. Every single person around me is 100% around me for the wrong reasons. 100%. How does it make you feel? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> does it actually, you're like, oh, I'll take advantage of this. No, like, I'm like, whatever, it works for now. But like, for sure, like, I know that, this is, it sounds stupid, but I know that like, um, the people that are around me are kind of probably there because like, I pay for everything. I take care of everyone. And mm-hmm. like, they go home in an Uber black. Like, they're not going home in a fucking Toyota Prius. Like, I, the biggest thing is, when you're having sex with someone or like hooking up with someone, it has to be about the experience. There's a couple things that are always like, I was hooking up with this girl and she always made sure there was a bottle of Fiji water beside the bed. For me, like spun me out. I was like, holy shit, you will be remembered for fucking time. Like for the times of like, I'll tell my kids about this. So like <laughs> when I'm like seeing a girl, like it's a whole experience. Like I have to make sure that like, they're never going to get that treatment anywhere else. Right. You're what? like an Uber driver for sex. You're yeah. Like five stars. It has to happen. Do you have like a mint next to the bed and then you say you want to change the playlist? I don't I won't talk a lot if you don't want me to. <laughs> Potentially. Like there is a dead play whatever. Shut up. But then you fucking tell me that you're looking for a partner. No, I am. That's the thing. Like, how am I meant to know who my wife is if I don't go through everyone? <laughs> Do you have like next best thing syndrome where you like always think there's the next best thing? Yeah, <laughs> but also I'm not, I'm not about to tear you apart and be like, oh, what are you saying? Like, nah. Are you? Did you say you're 24? Yeah, I'm t- 24. You're going on 30. Baby, it's adorable. Like, you should be doing what you're doing. Like, you're training for that person. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, and here's the thing, I would never hook up with a virgin. Like, terrified of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrified of you because I want someone that knows as you know been around the like we've all done out we've all chewed through as many people as we can mm-hmm. you've, you know exactly what you want you know exactly like your sexual energy you're mm-hmm. tuned into yourself you've spent enough time with yourself and other people you know exactly what's going on for me i'm like that is the most attractive thing because like we'll go in the bedroom or like we'll be out and about and you know what you want you're not gonna be like oh i, don't know, I want a caesar salad or fucking french fries like i don't know like figure it out i've broken up with people this one dude went to a japanese restaurant and was like what do you recommend and i was like Every Japanese restaurant's the fucking same. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, get some fucking miso out. soup at edamame. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same in every fucking restaurant. Okay. So, what are you insecure about yourself? Oh, shit. Um, insecure about myself? Uh, I'm a little bit, like, I'm on the thicker side, I think. Oh, we have a chubby king. Well, not chubby, but, like, I know that, like, I could look better and I should. But you drink too much? No, I, I don't. I actually don't drink a lot. Like, the... I'm very rare that I'm out and like getting fucked up. Really? But like there was the start of the year, I was sober for like 150 something days. Wow, what well, happened? I realized that like my career was like <laughs> gonna end. So I have to like <laughs> stop Be going. Fun. Yeah, like stop going out. Like, but, yeah, LA is a lot of like socializing and being seen and being out there, which kind of is can be emotionally draining so draining yeah it's like but also like you're putting so much energy into other people and that's what i was doing like trying to please everyone Mm. and then i realized like oh actually like i'm not like happy here so i need to like do shit that makes me happy and that's creating content and entertaining like the biggest thing for me is like i just want to make people laugh like i don't Mm. care if you look at me as a fuck boy a piece of shit but you're listening and you're laughing like that's the biggest thing for me do you 
do you ever deal with a lot of hate of people like um projecting their bad relationships onto you like you represent fuck boydom yeah for sure i think that it it's kind of a given like a, even if i'm in comments like people always projecting shit on me which is cool whatever do your thing like mm -hmm. leave those comments give me that engagement <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's great for my ego mm -hmm. but like um when i'm seeing girls or like we're starting a date or something and they like will see some shit online and be like they'll start like freaking out that i'm like the last guy like hey like legitimately like if I'm with you and I'm like locked in and I start caring about you, like, which is rare, um, <laughs> nah, I'm joking. but like, I'll, I'll make sure that like, I'm not like, I'm not here to, my biggest thing is I don't want to hurt anyone. Like I'm not yeah. trying to upset anyone. Yeah. Like if you r get ripped a little bit, like for me, that's Ew! <laughs> I love you acting like your shrimp dick actually ripped someone before. Anyway, I, um, <laughs> last night, last night I have photos of my fucking duvet. We call them dunas in Australia. Duvet? Yeah. Bloody? Yeah, I maybe a period come early, but I'm using it. I'm gonna feed, <laughs> feed my ego. I'm gonna say that my fucking girthy. Do you ever feel like you lose part of yourself when you fuck so many people? I actually, yeah, I think that was one of the biggest uh, things that I learned. It's like I was actually feeling like drained, like when I was having sex like two or three different people a day. <laughs> Were you really? Oh my god. <laughs> maybe but girls it's different like i guess like you're getting fucked so like you yeah. can feel kind of like like used and abused where like guys are like spreading your seed but like at some point it gets a little like monotonous yeah and it's also like i'm like isn't sex like the worst oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a good sex? i'm trying to convince you to like get bored with having no so much sex. i just think that sex is such a like physical touch is like one of my top love languages yeah. right but i feel Choking. That everything fuck don't <laughs> i'm on edge like i'm always horny um <laughs> no i don't know what i was saying <laughs> I said choking and i was like fuck. you said sex love language physical touch is important to you yeah i think it's i think it's so important but there's a point where like it is like draining like trying to well especially like being in the scene like i think that a lot of people would just fuck someone to say they fucked him and like yeah it's good or bad or whatever like and i think that's what kind of like sucks because like I said on my podcast, like, there was this girl, I had sex with her, and then didn't hear from her again, like, hit her up, like, hey, do you get lunch or, like, dinner? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Maybe the dick was terrible, worst mm -hmm. she's ever had. Possibly, like, probably, chances are probably high up there. Mm -hmm. But, like, at least, like, like want to get to know each other. But, yeah, it just sucks. You guys, sometimes when you're tall and Australian, people will use you. Yeah. You're getting used for your body. Yeah. Well, it's also, like, I don't, I really realize this. Not a lot of guys like pick girls up and just fuck them in the air. Like I realize that. I, it's important that you brought that up because <laughs> I have a stand up bit about when a guy picks you up and you feel like the dainty little flower that you are. Yeah. But like I'm sturdy, like I'm pear shaped, like I'm I have quads. Right. And if you're not working out like three to four times a week, you're not picking my ass up. But like in movies, everyone picks yeah. you up and puts you on like a counter and shit. Right. And like I feel like guys don't do that shit a lot. Yeah, I actually was seeing this girl and she's like no one's ever done that to me before and i'm like well fucking get used to it i feel like you're just trying to fuck my followers right I now i would love to <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sales pitch he's like so yeah. if would, you call this number if you want to get picked up I, I know a comic that used to have a bit about how women how he's never came from a blow job and then after every show women would come up to him and be like i bet you i could make you come from a blow job and he comes every time from a blow job well, I no, I do a similar thing. He comes in four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> like they just lick his balls. He's they're like, like ah! they're like, I'm the best. No, I, I do a similar thing, but it's more so like I don't want girls to make me come from head because it, then it's about me and it makes me angry. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would rather like eat you out, have a good time, know that you're absolutely relaxed. Mm -hmm. But if you're giving me head, I get fucking annoyed. Like I get so bored. I'm mm -hmm. like, please stop. Like, if I come, then what are you like? What's gonna happen with you? Like, I'm gonna, when no one's gonna want to take care of you so let me just do it first oh my god that is the most thoughtful romantic thing i've ever heard i'm a gentleman um so now <sighs> what i learned that is kind of interesting about you is right before you went on reality tv your parents were getting a divorce yes so um how the uh. fuck have you been coping with that um because that's like some deep especially later in life like that's some deep shit yeah i realize that i think my parents are kind of just trying to keep it together till we're like 18 and we could like figure shit out mm-hmm um, but it's just hard, like, especially with alcoholism mm. and, um, you know, like prescription drug addiction, shit like that. Like not trying to, sorry, dad for airing <laughs> your shit. 
um as as i always do i get another fucking email from the family um, <laughs> i love it's an email yeah. not even a face <laughs> nah fuck him um but no nah, I, I realized that it is because i know my mom was really trying to hold it together like like putting uh there was a lot of pressure on her like she was you know like this is your person you're meant to be with forever like yeah and i remember it's one time i called her and i'm like yo like mom you're gonna fucking die like one day you're gone done if you aren't happy get rid of him i don't give a fuck if it's my dad mm -hmm. or if it's my fucking dog like if you aren't happy like it's time to be selfish like you've put up with shit for as long as you can and also like again for dad's sake mom is in a state like whatever like yeah. everyone has their flaws mm -hmm. but i was sitting there i was like yo like fucking and i remember i was like just fucking stop like this isn't you're not happy you're calling me every day and there's negative energy i'm trying to live life and figure out how to last longer in bed mm -hmm. like <laughs> let me like do this thing over here and like life's way too short to be sad like, i said to her, i was like i'm gonna get rich i'm gonna send you to italy we're gonna get you a fucking 20 year old stud that's gonna yes little blow cool boy you. yeah i was mm. like he's gonna blow your back out and make you fucking squirt down the holes like figure it out mom yeah we love that let's, visual let's go like <laughs> But yeah. I, I hate to compare the two, but it reminds me like you're pretty, I feel like you're a pretty empathetic person where like, it, it's like instead of you caring to have a blowjob, you care to make sure the girl's enjoying it. Where yeah. it's like with your mom, you're like, I don't Please care. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like with your mom, you want to make sure she's coming. <laughs> no. no, but with your mom, you're like, you're not thinking of yourself first where you're like, I need to make sure the family's together. You're yeah. like, mom, like I want you to be happy. And the truth is, is like, you want your parents to be happy and if it's not together and also yeah. if you're dealing with addiction like they're putting addiction first they're married to the addiction yeah. they're not with you 100 percent. and uh, the thing that's crazy is i remember having very distinct like family meetings you know how boring those shit is like family <laughs> meetings like at fucking 18 19 like yo like let's go we're, we're our team we're gonna work through this together yeah. and it, it just kept like going back to like just getting fucked up 24 7 and like causing like fights and like rifts mm -hmm. and like the only time you know your dad would speak to you was like when he's angry about some shit so it's like fuck that like the if so, if something isn't working change it and that was the best thing i ever did like you know me and my old man aren't as close as we should be but the biggest thing is it's like every time we would speak it was full-blown aggression and like just a drunk old angry man that doesn't belong in my life like i love him he's always gonna be my dad like mm -hmm. raise me but it's like yo you're always just fucking drunk and angry like i'm just happy and drunk like <laughs> let me like i'm drunk and happy yeah let me, let me do my thing like fuck me like, i don't want to pick up the phone and like i've done something it's crazy when you realize your parents are like humans yeah and that your parents have their demons and that yeah. they're not just these like know-it-all elders who are wise and will teach yeah. you life oh i never thought that about my parents <laughs> Yeah, your parents in a commune. <laughs> yeah, I lived in a teepee. Yeah. Like, yeah, welcome to LA, guys. This is our LA tour. You know what the fuck is up. I feel like Harry, you're kind of, you're what? spiritual. Oh. Like, <laughs> sorry, what, yeah. you're like, what are you gonna yell at me about? Yeah. But I feel like you're spiritual. You talk about crystals and shit. Like, how? Mm. What is your like perspective with that? Like, do you believe in higher power? Um, to be honest, like my parents raised me to. They didn't want us to like believe anything until 18 like make up your mind which mm. was like very blessed like because when they grew up they got forced like to believe in god and like you have to go to church this is it this is blah 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 for us when we grew up they're like hey we want you to make up your own mind like you can believe whatever the fuck you want to believe and we'll accept you which was possibly the greatest mentality to put on like a you know a young kid that's like got shit coming at you from yeah. everywhere um and i think to be honest like i started when i realized like manifesting is real mm. and the shit that was like that i was thinking about just kept happening i was like oh shit like i just think there's maybe there's a higher being maybe there isn't but i just believe in like the universe and it has like a plan and like there's a whole bunch more shit that probably no one even knows about um and then i realized like once i s started tying like manifesting to like being spiritual and like reflecting and like getting deeper inside i realized that like i'm a lot happier and i get a lot more answers of who i am and where i want to go and who i want to be Ooh, that was hot it was we like this because he's a tall man who's working on himself yeah we love that for you and i also feel like what whatever hardship you had with the divorce it teached you to be like oh fuck we need to check in here because we don't want that yeah. repeating we don't and you also probably were affected by it so you're forced to be like okay how do we get through this yeah i think the best thing was is like having heartbreak because that made me like go like oh shit like 
what am I doing wrong? Like, who, like, am I happy? Did I not make her happy? Mm -hmm. Like, am I just a piece of shit? Like, for me, that was the best thing that happened is because, like, it, it got me out of, like, trying to, like, please everyone and, like, fuck around and, like, really reflect, like, what's going on. It was, like, when I was really depressed. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about, like, um, you know, who I want to be in, like, my mindset and what was going on. And then I think it was last year was the second time that, like, I really got fucked up. And that was when the show was airing and, like, all the stuff was going on and had the most attention I've ever, I've ever had. And then uh, there was, you know, some nasty comments made about me online. Mm -hmm. And then it all, like, all my comments went from positive, fun, yep. to, like, you are the fucking devil. It was the weirdest shit because I was sitting there, I'm like, fuck, like, am I a piece of shit? But you were the same person when they loved you and when they hated you. Yeah, I was like, nothing's changed. And, like, these comments are completely false. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just crazy to have all this, like, happen to you at once. So I really just, like, turned my phone off and just sat down and started talking to myself. Like that was the biggest thing is I realized that this phone is a phone. I can just put it over there mm -hmm. and I can go for a walk and mm -hmm. like look at this fucking sky and like Good. listen to a bird or like yeah. lick a tree. I would like walk a dog and I'm like, this dog likes me. And I'd be like walking yeah, and the, the dog's happy. I look around, there's some neighbors and you're like, oh, this is real fucking life. Yeah. And like you could ruin your mood or for four days just by seeing a comment on your phone. But it's crazy. Um, so I, I went to uh, my best friend uh went to his house in arizona and his mom is like a shaman Ooh. and that's when i really started like tapping into the spiritual shit because she just started telling me shit about myself that i was like how who like did he tell you this stuff like a little psychic like medium -ish? yeah like fully was just like like telling me about blessing the lands and like was doing all the stuff and was telling me about what is kind of like happening in my life that mm -hmm. i didn't know how to deal with because i don't want to talk to like people about it i just want to like figure this shit out and be like and you're a people pleaser, so you're probably trying to make sure everyone around you is having fun. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure that everything's good with them. And, like, I'm going to, there's a problem going on with me. I'm going to figure it out. So then, whenever my friends have that same problem, I can just be like, this is what to do, mm. how to get past it. And I remember being there, and we went to this place called, uh, what the fuck is it called? Sedona. Mm. Uh, have you heard of that? Yeah, Arizona. Yes, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of like energy vortexes, and it's a very like weird and wonderful place because there's a lot of shit that goes on. It's like a very native ground. Yeah. So we went in there, and that was kind of where I like, just sat down on the side of a mountain and just stared at shit and just like really like understood like yo like this is what's happening this is how we be better and this is how we like reflect a little bit more and like stop thinking about other people's shit because that's not you and then i think ever since then i've been really blessed with like that mindset of just like um i guess just you know, thinking about myself and like moving forward and then anytime i have like issues or like i'm at a uh, crossroad with like friends or some shit i'll call her uh -huh. And she'll, like, I'll, I won't have to say a word. And she'll tell me, like, and start pulling cards and shit. And it will just all make sense. I know it sounds like <laughs> a little bit, like, fucking heebie-jeebie, like, bullshit. Uh -huh. I don't believe in any of this shit before. But when she, like, when you find someone that actually knows what the fuck is up. And, like, mm -hmm. you don't have to say a word. And they tell you exactly what's going on in your life. Like, she gets you. And, and she's answer, super intuitive. Yeah. And she told me all the answers to shit. Like, I'm like, hey, like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> What is going on? Like, get out of my phone. But it's funny because you found peace, like, in the mountains, the energy vortexes and shit. But you decided, I'm going back in the game. I just yeah. have to have a better mindset. Because you yeah. still want to create content and put yourself out there in the public eye. Yeah. Did you have kind of a rough childhood? Um, nah. Like, I'm going to... Because I envision you either just, like, petting kangaroos or, like, what do people do? Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> I was... No, I grew up in a farm, so I had, like... Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I know, love every, farms. Everyone doesn't believe it. And it, again, lads... If you, I don't know if there's any lads listening to shit. <laughs> they do. So go to a farm, take photos of like random cows and shit, and just show girls. Like, <laughs> I swear to God, like no, if, there's because it's that like you take care of an animal, like fatherly yes. thing. It's hot. So I had a bull called Nigel and shit. And we, ha <laughs> we have like twelve horses, like fifty chickens, uh, and then two pigs, Buzz and Bella, uh -huh. and literally like five dogs. And like I'll show any person this, and they, they want to fuck you, and they're legitimately like. And I've had like an A-list celebrity. I showed them and they're like, I'm coming to the farm with you. I'm like, what the fuck is this magic mustard that my parents like put me in like growing up? It was awesome. Did you think you'd always leave that farm or did you think you'd stay a small town kid? Um, I really like knew, I sound like a fucking superhero, but I knew I was different. <laughs> 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 no. I got bit by a spider at a young age. Yeah, yeah. and I can fucking shoot spider webs out of my dick. No. <laughs> No, I uh, 
I just I knew that like fuck like I didn't want to do what everyone was doing. I'm sitting there at home and like um enjoyed like having making fun and everyone's like going to university and mm -hmm. getting pregnant and doing mm -hmm. boring shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is not me. I'm gonna just try and fucking figure shit out. So mm -hmm. I went and just like left the country, like lived in England and Europe for like eight months trying to like figure like grow up as a human. Yeah. And realize that every time I go out and get drunk, I don't need to punch people in the head because <laughs> they'll have knives and they'll stab me. <laughs> learning lessons left and right how's your anxiety do you suffer from anxiety at all i think it's developed like mm. there I, I think that's why i'm also not a big fan of new york is because my friends like decided to put my name tell us club i was coming and it just filled up with people and i love the fact that there was people there for me mm -hmm. but we just did, there wasn't like a routine like hey like how do i meet people like how do i like give it, you a hug it was like bombarding yeah people just started like jumping over barricades and shit and yeah. i was like i gotta get out of here yeah i think that uh as you know attention and um public attention stuff like that has like kind of like developed for me like going outside is a, i get a little bit more scared like mm. a little bit more anxious and i've never had it before because again you know i'm six five i'm a stud <laughs> no i know like i know how to scrap like i'm not really worried yeah. worried about shit but like now i'm like fuck like people like there's actually like a bigger target on my head maybe it's just mm. me making shit up but no every time i go out now i have security with me wow wow yeah. you have anything happen that caused that or just like you're being protective. Um, I just think that, again, like w uh, there was a there was a moment when the first time, the first time I actually ever had security out with me, one of my friends just got absolutely like beat the fuck out, like he just got a shit rocked. Oh my god! Or like extended friends. Like I go, we're at a club and I just saw this dude giving a fucking two piece soda. Like bang bang, left right, good night. Drop down, he hopped back up again and got piped again i was like no one like i was looking at his friends i was like no one is jumping down and helping this dude yeah because la people care about their face yeah i was like no one's gonna help this kid so i just jumped down i was like yo what the fuck is up and mm -hmm. i had my security with me mm -hmm. so I, I feel like i'm lucky that you know that i had that him with me because he pulled me out of it but i just like don't want to see my friends get hurt or anyone get hurt yeah so i picked this little man up <laughs> and it's like his, Smoking. <laughs> his feet, you know, his feet were like dangling. He's like yelling in my face, "I'll oh, fuck kill you! I'll break your jaw!" Blah, blah. I was like, "No, you won't!" Like, look at your feet; you're dangling. Like, you will not do anything. This like, is some toxic masculinity we're experiencing right now. I legitimately was <laughs> hold, holding him up, <laughs> like, like my child, and I was like, "There's <laughs> nothing you can do to me, little man. Like, it's okay. You knock my boy out; it's all good. But like, I'm hugging you now, and <laughs> you are my child." Yes. Yeah, I would have kissed him. That's, so, that's such a hairy beat up right there. Just like <laughs> giving a big hug. You and start just cracking jokes. Him. Yeah. Like, are you angry? Like, come on. Come <laughs> oh, on, you yeah, little I, floppy fish. Yeah. I have expertise in tall men, and I have yeah. realized that a lot of tall guys I've been with, when guys are drunk, they go for the tall guy. Yeah. Like, they, they almost think, like, that they that guy thinks they're better than them because they're big. Some weird like, outfit. It's their own insecurity, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, I'll have, like, tall guys that will just be like, I can't be here right now. That guy's too drunk. He's going to, like, start talking shit to yeah. me. And so, I mean, I think it's smart that you're you're protecting yourself and like you don't the stupidest shit happens when you're drunk and exactly. you don't want that to be what like could be a downfall of something it, it's bizarre and also my best friend Christian's never been in a fight in his life so I know I'm fucked <laughs> I had no I swear to god there was one moment in university with my other friend best friend at the time Alex mm -hmm. huge monster of a man never been in a fight in his life and that's when I realized like yo if, if I'm getting a fight I need to have people who can scrap around me we were at this lookout it was so sick it's like 4am and we were with these girls you know, trying to be like fun and like romantic like, watch the sunrise <laughs> and these two drunk dudes La La come out of the fucking woodworks no. out, out of a party like busted up they just had a fight and they were like talking shit like being funny and then one of them like tackled me right and i was sitting there i was like what the fuck is going on i was like this is weird and he's like like pushing my head in the dirt like joking around and i was like okay now now i'm angry i legitimately just remember standing up smacking him with right hook he dropped down he was like fully asleep and I was like, Alex, get the fuck up. We're going, get these girls, we're leaving. So we're like walking back to my little Ford Fiesta while his friends trying to figure out why his friends like asleep on the ground. <laughs> and we're like going back to my little Ford Fiesta and um, these guys start like coming at me and I was like, Alex, let's get ready, let's, let's go. This guy's got a rock in his hand. <gasps> and the, Alex <laughs> gets in my car and locks the doors. <laughs> and, and I was like, yo, like I have to figure, two dudes, bro two dudes and this girl screaming in my ear like someone just murdered their fucking cat two dudes you have to turn into a marvel character yeah i was like one of them has a rock i'm like trying to rip the door open. i was like alex open the fucking door and he's like sitting there like staring <laughs> frozen. straight frozen he's like oh, i can't deal with this so i was like all right sweet i have to fucking figure this out but yeah anyway 
I ended up winning, so it was all good. I love all this. Vi- you wake up and choose violence sometimes, but it's okay. No, I'm an angel. Like, I don't want to yeah. do that. Like, I don't want to You don't want ha- to don't don't. have to hurt people. Yeah, I know, um, I'm a Hulk. <laughs> in terms of, like, bars, like, because I feel like there's a lot of single girls listening. Mm. Like, I feel like sometimes bars can turn into, like, middle school, where it's, like, the guys over here, the girls over there. It's very clicky, huh? Yeah. Well, do you have any advice for, like, women in terms of, like, first like chat or like ways to interact and break the ice a little bit yeah i think the best thing that when you talk to someone is just don't talk about them or like oh like hey you're cute like talk about like have you got a dog Mm. or some shit like that i've found that whenever i'm talking to a girl like trying to like approach her or like i'm a little bit i I do get very nervous when i talk to gorgeous girls the big the best thing to do is if they have like a animal we like if you okay this is if you know each other but like not at the bar but we'll get into that this but is so alive if they have a little chihuahua in their purse no but <laughs> no but so i so if they have a dog like oh i would love to like hang out with your dog or like or oh, my dog wants to go on a date with you like that's so less confrontational okay wait abby can you say i'd love to hang out with your dog i'd love to hang out with your dog Ugh. see when he says it it doesn't hit the <laughs> Cause you, I love to hang out. Oh, I could, I could do, I could do it cooler, but you know, no, I'll, I'll be like, oh, Bruce wants to like meet your pup. No, I think you nailed something though. It's if you're not talk, asking them about themselves, that's fucked up. And then yeah. if you're like too like you're cute or you're whatever, it's weird. Yeah. But I find like let's say they're wearing a jersey of like an, a sports team, like talk making about a that. comment about that. Yeah, because then you guys are both have the pressure off of like yeah. the microscope on each other. But also women. It is so attractive when you come up to a man or like us in a bar and just like start talking shit. Like that conf- like again, like it goes both ways, right? So yeah. if, if I'm confident and I'm pushing it onto you, you feel that energy, you're like excited. If a girl does that, actually this girl walked up to me last night at the club, she's like, I'm gonna fuck you tonight. I'm like, Hey, that doesn't sound enjoyable. <laughs> I'm scared, but like the confidence is sick. You need to just like we need to fine tune that. <laughs> fine tune. It's a little that. raw. It's yeah. a little rough around the edges, but yeah. I was like, I know I've like advertised myself as like a bit of a slut, but like mm-hmm. that, you know, scary. I would think uh, I miss the single days, but my go to move was like, let's say I wanted to talk to you and you're like with your friends. First, go to the guy you're not nervous to talk to. Yeah. And, and grab like his vibe. With, <laughs> fuck him. Yeah. Then go to. His, no, no. <laughs> but just like like vibe with him, joke with him. Because like yeah. if you if you think I'm attractive, you'll notice me in that circle. Yeah. And then like you don't have to deal with the immediate rejection because then I feel like if I'm then I leave. Yeah, it's, it's, I have a long Dudes game. will do that to girls too. Then yeah, it's like 100%. this weird, yeah. awkward, works both ways. like having yeah. a swap. Because then yeah. if you do that, then it's just no one's happy. And it, and it, <laughs> and it also like <laughs> then, the, hurts then the people ego. get disappointed. I, also, like, just fuck. I don't know. Like I, I have no problem walking up to any girl and talking to her. But really? like, n- not I'm an terrified. issue. But if like, but it's like you got to give me something. Like I'll walk up and introduce myself to anybody. But I'm yeah. like, but if you are interested, you have to at least like give me something to work with yeah i don't i don't do the formal like hey like yeah. come up hey nice to meet you oh i do I'm, that i just walk straight i don't do up. the form. Yeah. i'll do the like uh, what would i say to you i'd be like backwards hat how old are you 25 good because if you're over 30 that's annoying like talk about a topic oh, that's like just like talk about a topic See, i i swear to god like as if i'm i don't care who you are death, i'm just trying to talk deathly shit. afraid of talking to girls at a club like or in general like, this is so funny. no this is crazy and i'll and i'll air it out right and now. everyone thinks you're just rejecting them no i'll air i'll air this girl out right now there's the most gorgeous girl i've ever seen in my entire life like legitimately like spitting most like spitting the most stunning person i've ever but seen just saying, spitting in, in your mouth i would love i would love nothing more <laughs> um most stunning person i've ever seen in my entire life her name is claudia t or whatever her name is on mm-hmm. uh, she's an influencer oh we're doing full names hell yeah i don't care she's so gorgeous and i've never seen a human that stunning and she was across me at the club and i she was like looking at me and i legitimately was like looking down i was like <laughs> fuck like don't what's s- her name claudia t i was like don't look at me like you're so stunning and then she messaged me she's like um next time come up to me I'm like no, what do you think? You're like, like <laughs> not a chance. Oh like, yeah, she's 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 nuts. literally the most perfect like human that I've ever seen, and I was like, I will never walk up to you. <laughs> Your voice just cracked. <laughs> yeah, like like my knees will buckle and I'll start shaking. Like I just it's so awkward when you're like I need to. C- I need to say something, but you forget how conversation works. Yeah. And you're just like, what do people say in and, this moment? And also, like, I'm the guy, like, oh, you're, the, what, like you're gonna die one day, go do it, figure it out. Me in real life, can't even, if, <laughs> I can't even listen to myself. I'm just like, holy but shit. You think she's so hot that, like, her world is, like, different than your world, that, like, like vibes move differently when, like, yeah. 
You just you have to b- ball up. But I I was even trying to like text it and I was like trying to be confident, but I'm shitting myself. You forget how to put words together. Yeah, I, le- I legit was just like, where are we going for dinner? Like, Has that ever accidentally what? worked in your favor though? Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> for me too sometimes. Just sometimes, but I, I fully just you become it. mysterious, but yeah, you really yeah, yeah, just yeah. Can't talk. So I've I've like I've gone out with girls before where there's like I thought you hated me. I was just like, oh, I don't know. I thought it was just being chill. Yeah, it was being relaxed. Yeah. I find, though, when I play the card, like, where I'm too nervous to go straight to the guy I like, and it's also, like, I want to act like I'm not, like, too thirsty to talk to him, yeah. then eventually you're in the group and he'll talk to you, I feel like. If yeah. if you've if I'm in the group, it's not, like, a one-on-one, like, nervous, like, bachelor moment where it's, like, do you want to have a conversation? you got to be careful talking to their friends, though, because like, if a girl comes and talks I to one to, of my like, guy friends, like, I'm a, like, I'm a no, loyal friend. No, I go to, friend. like, the ugliest one. No, but that doesn't matter, though, because True. if a girl's talking to, like, my ugliest friend, I'm not going to be a dickhead and swoop yeah. in on his chick, you know what I really? mean? Yeah. But no, I'm not, fuck. I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm more like I'll go by and someone I'll be like fuck the Yankees like that's the kind of engagement right. yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, doing yeah. loud like, and proud <laughs> yeah yeah um, no I think that you have to, have to go for the ugliest one and then <laughs> <laughs> no because but it's more vibe like I'll see him and be like hey, hey. like I'm not like no you know, walk up to the hottest one and say hey who's your friend can you introduce me <laughs> <laughs> that would that would hurt me more than anything <laughs> wait it's so f- but you're confident in front of the camera you yeah, online online you do whatever I put this crazy persona on in person I'm like at the club like on my phone like oh my god you see that girl she's so hot can you get an instagram <laughs> or i like go get my security like can you ask who that is one time i walked up i i <laughs> wrote my name and number on a on the notepad app and then screenshotted it and walked up to a table of hot chicks and just dropped it to all of them that's good yeah no. i like that or i also get my uh whenever i'm out and people like asking for my details i'll just get my best friend to put his like snap code up like a oh, fuck boy i'm like <laughs> Fuck him before you fuck me. So I know, you know, it's good. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Just deep in the L.A. fuckboy mindset. It's beautiful. Uh, um, We're going to end with a final game. Mm? And it's called The uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> what are you greedy about? What am I greedy about? Mm-hmm. My time. Oh, do you, are you good at saying no to people, even though you're a people pleaser? Um... Look at me acting like I know him forever. <laughs> I'm like, mm, really? Because yeah, really? that's not what I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like time's the only thing that I never, like you never get back. It's like you can spend money, you'll get it back. Time, you'll never. I'm not going to lie. I thought you'd be late today and that's why I came late. Really? I was like, he's not going to come on time. Oh, Harry's always on and time. And I rolled in like 10 minutes late and you were sitting there and I like immediately was like, oh shit, I yeah. respect him. No, I, uh, for, for me, my parents always told me you have to be 15 minutes early to stuff, like for meetings, important meetings, because like you need to, sh- like again, they instilled that on me. Like time al- is the most important thing. I also wanted to show like the power dynamic that like I run shit, you know, so I came a little right. later, made sure that you waited for me. Yeah, no, we were filming ads, so don't worry about it. Good, no, I'm amazing. joking. We, 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 <laughs> no, I just, the Uber actually fucked up. Anyway, yeah. who are you envious of? Who am I envious of? Mm-hmm. Wow, it's such a big word. I think... Um, and it could be a type of person, too. This is going to sound stupid, but Logan Paul. Why? Um, I'm envious of his intelligence and how he, how dynamic he is. Like, I, More so inspired, right? So I think that he is... And I always get hate when I fucking light him up because I think he's such a legend. I think mm-hmm. the fact that he's gone from many different platforms as well as mm. now very like smart in... The crypto world like is nft shit for me like that seems so scary for me to even think about as well as even acting singing it, fuck fighting what about jake <laughs> he doesn't like me i think you could, I, I think you could take inspiration from <laughs> oh my god am i about to get some tiktok beef right now yeah. um so a lot of people love to hate Mm. on logan paul yeah do you envy that side of it or do you think that's just part of it when you get that big yeah i think once you get that big that people are always gonna do shit but i don't know i just feel like again like he's just if you know logan as a, as a person i know a lot of people don't but as a human nicest dude has, you know him yeah has time for everyone Aww. always uh always switch on like if if i called him right now he would answer the phone like he's wow a great person like he's obviously gone through enough shit to be like cool like i'm gonna be a good person forever and he's a great person he's very smart like he's very switched on about his money yeah. and uh who he is as a person i do i think i like the mentality of people who don't see things like this is how it's done before so this is how it has to be I and with technology yeah. now you could do so much anything it's crazy yeah i think that's the biggest thing is you want like taking inspiration from people like oh shit you've 
leap that far it means that i can also leap yeah that like far. alex cooper she's my fucking girl because i want to surround myself with people who are like breaking boundaries and stuff because yeah. then you're just stuck in a rut of people <sighs> just hating on each other she should, and i don't need to she can ruin my life <laughs> <laughs> you're a baby i would simp for her if you were t- 20 years older sh- maybe you'd have a chance i can age quickly <laughs> <laughs> like let me lay in the sun for a month what's just it's just age she's table. my ride or die um let her ride <laughs> What are you gluttonous about? What's your guilty pleasure? Gluttonous? Yeah. I've never you... heard that word in my life. <gasps> really? Bad. Gluttonous? It, gluttonous is like it overindulging. Like, some... like wow. yeah, it's gluttony. It's like sounds like you, some like, sort of eat muscle too group. Much. <laughs> <laughs> your glutes. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, what, what's wrong with my glutes? Yeah, gluttonous is like you you overdo it. You want so much of it. So what's the question again? What are you gluttonous about? <laughs> that I want more of? Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, influence right like Ooh, i the, thought you're gonna say eating pussy continue no that eh, whatever <laughs> uh you know i feel like whatever um no nah, i feel like so i'm not sure if you know but the reason why i got into reality tv is because uh i had a lot of bad stuff happen to me so i was at university mm-hmm. and i was i wasn't enjoying it like I, I don't really take people's orders too well i wasn't really doing amazing grades and my brother's best friend ended up committing suicide Oh, shit. So I was at a point where I'm like, hey, I could fucking be sad about this and destroyed, which I was, or I could try and do it, do something that makes my friends laugh. So then I was on Facebook. My friend tagged me in this thing called Heartbreak Island. And this is when the manifestation started for me because I'm like, I'm going to go on this. I'm going to win it. And I'm going to make people laugh. Like, that's my biggest thing. That's why I have like such a crazy persona online is because... I'm doing it so that people are going to laugh and enjoy it and like have a fucking giggle, have like maybe, you know, a 30 minute break from that crazy fucked up life yeah. or whatever's going on at home. So I went and did that, went on the show, Heartbreak Island, won it, won $100,000, had a great time. There was a speech on there, which I made about mindset. And it was really weird because I never even thought about that stuff. Like I was, uh, we went in and I was having a fight with this girl that I was dating and I literally, maybe it's me being a Gemini, but I had this argument with her and I walked outside and I come back in and I was like, actually, that doesn't matter. She's like, what? I was like, that argument, I'm fine. I don't want to talk about it. I want to move forward. I just think that that argument is not going to matter in six months time. It's all about mindset. And I think that if we keep going like that, we're just not going to be ahead and it doesn't matter. I don't want to fight about it. I just want to be happy with you. And like fully just had, it was a little bit more, uh, yeah. emotional than that <laughs> yeah. and I, I still have it on my phone but I remember when that episode aired and I started getting all these DMs it was the first time I've ever had that feeling of like holy shit like I'm doing something that makes people feel a little bit better and laugh and like enjoy themselves so I, I literally took a photo of myself because I was crying like I couldn't stop the tears I'm like this is exactly what I needed to do to get to where I'm at and then the Netflix show came about and I was on Netflix and um, the obviously the the influence and everything that come about it was incredible. I think that was the reason why I got really fucked up when I started getting hate comments because I was like, oh, this isn't... What th- you went into Yeah, I was for. like, this isn't who I want to be. Like, I'm not trying to upset you. I don't want people to look at me and feel angry. It's not what I want at all. Um, and But with that show came a lot of answers from that first suicide. So uh, mm-hmm. it was bizarre because one of his close friends because I never got any answers I didn't know what was going on I had no idea what happened and then the it's a sensitive subject you're not like yeah I'm not, and I'm not gonna go like stop asking people like holy shit what was going on I just knew that he was in a dark time and some shit and he was fighting demons that, that no one knows about but uh, the show the Netflix show come out and you know someone that was very close to him at the time ended up reaching out like hey Harry uh, I've been looking for you like blah 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 and then I had all the answers that I had and I was like wow like this is awesome um you know i'm doing this for the right reasons i'm in here to to just make people entertained um and then this year has been pretty fucked up uh, with uh um mental health like people really close to me my one of my very close friends from that first show committed suicide mm. a couple like a, a month before my birthday Shit. i remember it being in tulum i was like fucking like on the table like fuck yeah i'm the king and then it just hit me i was like wow this sucks like this would have been really cool for to like for me to just make more people laugh or at least check in a little bit more or push a more positive message and then a couple months later my uh 
best friend's mom passed or committed suicide and um again didn't like it's been weird because i'm like shit am i not maybe that i think that's why i went sober as, as well and and like i've been focusing a little bit more about myself is like am i not doing enough to make like my friends entertained or like i'm not checking in enough i don't know maybe that's me being selfish mm-hmm. and like maybe i need to be more funny i think that's why we love doing the podcast and stuff like that is because i see messages of people laughing and having good times like i can't stop watching this like i get messages of people saying like hey we binged the whole podcast and we really enjoyed it because it made it made them laugh like you binge the whole podcast that means you like sat down for hours and like mm-hmm. listened to us just talking shit for me that's the most fulfilling feeling is because like now i get to make people like laugh and have like a little break i know like because i i i don't see like followers i, I hate saying fans but i hate that yeah, term me too because i just i see people as friends yeah and and i just have a lot more friends than i knew i could ever have and i think that's why i enjoy having the podcast and entertaining is because i really love making my friends laugh and i think that's what i want more of is to and now you're doing it just at a bigger scale yeah and, th- and that's the thing is I, that's why i want more influence or more more reach because i want to be like you know what this this year we hit fucking 15 million homes and we made 15 million homes have a have a laugh for an hour and that's the most fulfilling feeling because like there's probably someone that is you know on their edge and they want to do it like uh, t- unfortunately take their life in and, and we get to they get to turn their phone on or they for one moment they get to sit down and have an hour where they just laugh and think about something else and for me that's the whole purpose of this mission that i'm that i've been on and that i realized that I'm here to do is just to make people like giggle. I think that's the people pleasing side of me that you know so well. <laughs> of. Um, but yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. No, I mean, well, that's why I'm so happy to have you on this podcast because Burning in Hell is like, I brought a lot of people on that people look up to and think like, well, Fuck, they what have am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, yeah, I don't know how this <laughs> ended up happening, but like people were like, oh, if I had what he had, like I'd yeah. be happy to realize that like everyone is suffering from a lot of similar demons and that like, we all need to get through darkness together yeah and like coping with your hell and everyone's hell seems like the worst shit ever because we're all living like single player games exactly and yeah that's that shit like that's powerful stuff you said when you get to a certain point hate is just part of life yeah and some people that's their demons that they're projecting onto you um what a what a good answer when was the last time you experienced extreme wrath or anger damn um <laughs> <laughs> this guy you fought with him <laughs> nah you yelled at him nah there was just something that shouldn't have been done. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, actually to be honest i don't really i don't get angry i uh when no harry was like way cooler than he should have been yeah I, I really don't get i really don't get angry about i was like he like things. called me that day i'm like dude like be madder yeah Yeah. read me out i deserve it no i just i realized because i was a very angry kid right like i would go to bars and like just to be the intent like i'm just gonna punch someone in the head (laughs) like i swear to god we would me and my boys would just be out and about like they'd be filming people fight in the back like at a back alley and i'd just be like i'm gonna punch you right now and just because i want to do it so i think that you're lefty no it's just a nice little jab you know just throw around um but (laughs) Yeah, I think that I don't really. I just see everything as lessons. Like, a, there's just so much wasted energy getting angry when I could just be mm. like, "Oh, right, actually, that's meant to happen, and there's a bigger plan for it." Yeah. So I'm just gonna like, let's relax, let's take a deep breath, and realize that getting angry is wasting that's everyone's fucking time. Powerful. Well, it's this like negative feeling that just weighs you down. I yeah. realize like the people who are successful are not people that had fewer bad things happen to them it's the ones that get hit and like get right back Figure up. It out. it's like f- if you're gonna fail fail fast yeah and you can't harp on like yeah shit that didn't work because you just be like okay new perspective that opportunity was not meant for me yeah and um, like 100%. and it, it really is like sports where like what are you gonna be upset about the point you just played or like the the shot you just missed when like shots are happening in front of you yeah yeah like look at anthony joshua every time he like he's t- taking a couple of losses now but every mm-hmm. time he like is very well spoken i'm not sure if you watch boxing but he's very fucking like not beat up about it. he's very like he speaks not upset or anything like that it's like i'm just going to reflect on my performance i'm going to do better like that's exactly what it is it's just yeah. like when when you're angry you're just wasting 
all this energy on what could be a great day. Mm-hmm. Like you're putting all this energy into making your day shit. Why don't you just not do that? And you know just- Emma Raducanu? No, nah, but I want to know her with a name like that. <laughs> She's the British tennis star who's like 18 and just from qualifying won the US Open. And she blew up and got like 2 million followers and everyone's like obsessed with her. And then the next tournament she played, she lost first round. And everyone was like, what the fuck? And she just was like, I'm so happy this happened early in my career that I, so I can like learn how to deal with this shit early on. And I was like, damn, a that's a way to twist that in a positive what way. A legend. Instead of being like, yeah, it's just a lot of pressure and I crumbled. And said so she was like, so glad I got this learning lesson so early. Yeah, that's that's very mature. Ooh, when was the last time you were a sloth? So do you ever get like lazy and not do anything all day? Uh, this morning, I was so bad. <laughs> nah, nah i i really to be honest i hate wasting days like so corny but you like, have a very yolo mentality y- yolo you only live once oh right yeah yeah, yeah. drake said that yeah um shout out drake <laughs> like, I, I know he listens were you like that earlier in life or it's more been later on that you're like you I, only live once i think like very blessed living on a farm with mm. my parents like up at 6 a.m every day and like, because the, the, the birds wake you up, they're so fucking loud. Like yeah. the kookaburra is like legitimately you're like, shut, kookaburra. like shut the fuck up. Like it's so loud. And the galahs, like they're just going nonstop. So we're up at like 6 a.m. And I think that's always been the, the best thing that's like stayed with me forever is like, I love being up early. Like I just love being up early and I hate wasting my days. Like if I'm like hung over and stuff, I'll still make sure that I get outside and go to the gym or like walk the dogs or do something and not be like a lazy piece of shit. Cause like, I won't be happy. I won't be happy with myself. Wow, we're getting we're getting deep. Two more questions. Mm. When's the last How time? How big is your cock? <laughs> <laughs> we heard it's like it's a little below average, yeah. but it, it'll be fine. It has a good curve. It's good, like two, three inches. When was the last time you let your pride or your ego get in the way of something? Like, how's your ego? That's a good question. How about, do you think I got a big ego? No, not at all. He's lying. I pay him. <laughs> <laughs> I pay this guy. <laughs> you actually have I. I feel like your ego is better than what I thought it would be. Really coming in. Wow. Well, it's so easy to have an ego. And I realized I was talking with Tinks about this. Even like checking your phone mm. is ego. Like, what are you checking it for? Yeah. Why do you need to see like what people are saying, bad or good? That's like that's true. feeding this ego where yeah. if you can disconnect and like. Just oh, yeah. Know. I guess you could have a big ego, but be nice to people still. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. I, I think um, when did I let my ego get in the way? So I don't know. It's I really, a hard one. Yeah. I really don't know when I. Uh, put that in, in front of me. I feel like it could be like friends, career, relationships. Yeah, I think probably with girls, to be honest. Like, there'll be moments where I'm just like, I, I'll just pretend like I don't give a fuck because yeah. I don't want to, like, I don't want to, like, make it bruise my ego or some shit when, yeah. when I should really just stop being a little bitch and just care a little yeah. bit more. It's really like your 20s for dating is just like practicing being trial runs a, yeah yeah and like taking what you like but also practicing who you are in a relationship because a relationship is a mirror yeah like when you sit and like bond with someone you just see all your shit come out i don't know if i want that and like well, the, well <laughs> if you do that, that's why when you're 45 you're gonna be mm, perfect Damn. perfect that's why you gotta wait it out sometimes ladies with these men um when was the last time you lusted over someone that girl in the club <laughs> and now you're all jacked up on it claudia Fuck. But she also the girl she wants you. She messaged you. Yeah, I don't know. But this is the problem. Don't put these people on such a pedestal that then right. you can't talk to them. And then six months in, you realize you actually don't like them, and their mom won't stop texting you. And the next thing you know, you're fucked. Yeah, sounded oddly specific. Yeah, yeah, that was. Sounds like you've been through that before. <laughs> Just every tall guy I've ever dated. Right. Um, no, because I'll have this thing where like I'll see a tall guy yeah. who's hot, and then I'll fill in all the blanks of how perfect he is and then I'll want to win it and then I'll get it and then I'll realize like he's boring as shit. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> well, our only personality is being tall. Like, what else we got going on? Well, it's like pretty privileged. Like, you you haven't had to like... Be funny. Small kings. <laughs> I know, but that's why it's interesting that you're funny. Were you ugly as a kid? Yeah. That's why, okay. Are you crazy? I, I literally <laughs> grew up, I had four and a half years where I had braces, rubber bands, and blocks in my <laughs> mouth. So I legitimately was like... The and I had glasses as well, like I. But I was also and I was tall and skinny. Like yeah. I didn't have anything going on. I was the last one to lose my virginity in my group. Yeah, I had to lose it to my friend's cousin because like no one else was fucking. <laughs> <laughs> like it was crazy. Jenny, Wait, fuck. That makes so much sense. Yeah. Um. Also, why do you have tattoos on your hands? So every time I get drunk, um, I get a tattoo. Like so, the the one on my knuckles is my friend's company. Turns out it means like cheater in Japanese, which sucks. Um. <laughs> 
It was my friend's company at Catch, and we were fucked up. And I was like, I'll get your company tattooed on me on my neck. She's like, that is so aggressive. So you're trying to be like a lot of tattoos over time? No, I want to get them all taken off. They fucking suck. Um, <laughs> so I got this one when I was depressed. I got that for Tavita, who uh, committed suicide this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I got that for my fucking ex-girlfriend because we thought we were going to be together forever, but mm -hmm. apparently not. And I got it like one session getting removed and I realized that like, fuck it. Like, it's annoying. Got that with another girl um, who I'm also like was best friends with, but I also was like kind of like liked her. And then yeah. she got a boyfriend and we stopped talking. And then this <laughs> other one, 42 for 1942, when I was fucked up, it was like 10 of us. And what? then. Uh, oh, sorry. No, more. continue. <laughs> well, I got my Todd tatted on my lip. And then there's this elephant with Arabic writing on my bum that Todd did when I was 17 that says, elephants never forget not which doesn't make any sense no and i was just fucked up i was like yo that's sick like, and then i went to Amsterdam and met this girl who could read arabic and she's like that makes no sense <laughs> so yeah that's me do you have any advice for people after a breakup because i feel like you've had some tough ones right i think the biggest thing when you're going through a breakup or a shit time first things first tell all your friends shut the fuck up i don't hear about it i don't hear about their stories I don't want to watch their stories, block mm -hmm. them on everything. I know it's like brutal to like hard cut, cut someone off. A cold turkey. But you have to do it. Like, or else you're going to be like, oh, maybe I'll just. It's like a drug. You want to stop snoring coke? You can't be like playing in a sand castle of cocaine all the time. Yeah, legitimately. Like you're going to get a little bit inside you and then you're going to be like, I want the whole bag, <laughs> you know, or the whole <laughs> cock and balls. But like, I think the first thing is whatever I tell my friends is I don't want to hear about what they're doing. If you've heard something, don't tell me block them on everything make sure your friends like don't if they still want to be friendly with them cool whatever who cares but just like please don't tell me if they're like doing shit or doing shit for attention like if they're posting like girls love to post memes or like fucking quotes on their story like they think it's doing something like don't i don't want to see it i don't wanna check it don't even look on a fucking fake account don't do that stuff and then fully pull yourself away from that feeling and and reflect like go outside like turn your phone off Maybe go for a hike, sit on top of a mountain that you don't like to do. <laughs> um, listen to Gary Vee. No. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is take time for yourself. Because when you're in a relationship or when you're with someone, especially if it's toxic, you're putting so much energy and time and all your emotions into making that person like the person you, maybe you want them to be or like you want them to be better. Stop doing that. You're now drained. You're now tired and you're like upset about this stuff. So the best thing you do is go eat a fucking eat some food that you fucking want like you want waffles go eat that make yourself feel good mm -hmm. go outside lay in the sunshine like even just having like 10 minutes in the sun like feeling that energy or like looking at trees and just like taking in the beautiful world around us you're gonna feel so much better um and then just work on self-improvement because the best thing to do after a, a breakup is to put that sad energy into making yourself better like mm. i'll make sure that i'm like maybe i, I want to like learn to be like a little bit better or learn another language or like make my skin better or Have like ever, do you know other languages no no I, <laughs> I, I was just i was just trying to sound more impressive <laughs> i i just i just speak i can barely speak english i know i was like what the fuck yeah i was like fuck like i didn't want you to say that because i wanted people to be like this guy can speak like 10 languages um but yeah i think that's the best thing is just put your energy into self-improvement you're right like it, maybe you want to go to the gym or maybe you want to just like get a tan or surf or learn something because put your mind to it you're going to be better you're going to look better and you're going to feel better and then your energy is going to glow and radiate out of your skin and every fucking cock and balls around the block will be trying to get in there oh my god you are so fucking love and light good energy you yeah. are way more multifaceted and complex than and the australian gandhi yeah <laughs> <laughs> especially with that backwards hat i'm like this yeah. motherfucker was he about to say yeah um to wrap this up, you crushed it in hell. Thank you. Thank you for your vulnerability. Ah, uh, no worries. What advice would you give to people on how to cope with your hell when you're fucking going through it? Yeah. Like when it's dark, when you're in that depression. And you already kind of teased with like after a breakup, but like I know you've dealt with depression, you've dealt with bad times. Yeah. What's your best advice? The best thing that I ever learned was from this uh, legend that we had on our podcast called Charlie Rocket. Mm. He was talking about his mindset when he was fucked up. He had like a brain tumor. He had all this fucked up. He was overweight. Had this crazy shit going on. You should, if you have time, like watch his full story, uh, especially on Logan Paul's podcast, because mm -hmm. that's what changed my life. And when I was at my lowest, when there was a whole bunch of bad family shit going on, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just wrap this up so I don't have to worry about it anymore. The best thing I started doing was changing that mindset to focusing on your winning streaks. Because whenever you're sad, whenever you're depressed throughout the day, 
You just think about all the sad shit that's going to... In gonna, your past. Yeah, it's going to make you fucking annoyed. Like, okay, cool. Like, you might you might get a red light. Like, fuck this dumb <laughs> red light. Like, I, w- I need to go here now. Or, like, you might stub your toe. Like, fucking stupid toe. Like, fuck this shit. And you're, gonna, you're creating, like, this negative fucking snowball of energy. So, the whole day, you're just sad and depressed. And you're putting more and more reasons on why you shouldn't be around. When you ha- change your mindset to the winning streaks, you'll be like okay cool like i didn't get this red light you know what but there is a beautiful world outside i get to see something i didn't get to see or you'll go and like be outside and be like damn i could get a coffee and like feel this good for like four dollars or you could be like you know what i have the freedom to just go and like sit down with like a friend and like talk to them or i can go like get food or waffles or like eat a chocolate bar or something that i enjoy (laughs) you love waffles i'm really thinking about it right now (laughs) but like you you change your mentality to think about the winning streaks throughout the day yeah and i promise you like by the end of the day you're going to feel so much better because all you're doing is changing that frequency in your head Mm. to like thinking about like good things that have happened like the past week i've had uh i've been in a a weird mindset and really like sad about myself and my actions and who i am as a person and i was like feeding into that and i'm like oh actually you know i lost like i think probably like a quarter million dollars in like brand deals so i was sitting there i'm like oh i'm so sad about this but i'm like what the fuck is wrong with me no like that happened for me not to me Mm. and then that mindset of like actually you know i live in this beautiful place i can put my phone down and there's problems don't actually matter anymore like the winning streak is like i get to wake up every day i get to go have a shower i have a fucking beautiful dog that i love i get to go work out i get to go do whatever the fuck i want and um you know i just the whole the whole mindset is just changing that's why i have it tattooed on my hand because whenever i'm sad i just look down like oh actually winning streak like i'm actually alive i'm moving Mm. there's a beautiful world i can go you know eat someone's pussy and have a great day and what's important with this winning streak you said it's nothing you said was something that you can't just do that isn't already in you yeah like looking outside and just appreciating it you're not like oh i have to get this brand deal or oh i have to do this yeah you're literally like the happiness is in you it's It's just just being aware of it and manifesting that yeah it's all about gratitude like that's the and whenever i'm at the end of my road or like feeling fucking depressed or annoyed or frustrated what's what i do with my team i tell everyone in the group chat i need five things that you're grateful for today it doesn't matter what the fuck it is Mm. just write it down i need to feel that and i also need to do the same Mm. just even just writing it down putting that putting your energy from your fingers into a piece of paper with ink will make you feel so much better and just think about the shit you're grateful for they say your brain can't feel anxiety and gratitude at the same time really and that's why gratitude's so powerful Wow. I saw it on TikTok, so it's take that with a grain of Harry, you're fucking incredible. This was so fascinating, interesting, way more than I thought it would be. Uh. Um, <laughs> Harry, where can people follow you, listen to you, listen to our pod, watch you? Give me the goods. Yeah, so we just smashed out a podcast episode. It's actually, we did it on the same day. I just changed my shirt and my hat, <laughs> put my hat backwards. Um, Movie magic. Yeah, we, but she's wearing the same outfit because she did prepare for this. <laughs> um, one of us is a professional. But... You can see, you can come find uh, our episode together on my podcast, exactly the same set, sitting exactly the same. I'm just wearing a different shirt and a hat. <laughs> Most people are listening to it. Uh, fuck. <laughs> um, it's called Tap In uh, with Harry Jazzy, and you can find me everywhere. Um, it is just my name, Harry Jazzy. Like I'm tall, you'll see me walking through. 6'5". S- I crop my legs out of photos because they're so skinny. So <laughs> there you go. I look shorter online. So Hell yeah. Um thank you, little devils. Thank you, little foreskins, for coming through. Yeah. And we'll talk to you later in hell. Uh. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>